Hey everyone, The Diplomat here, coming to you from the USA, and we are on part 17 of the Chris Watts Discovery read-through. We last finished off on page 331 with some uh, handwritten FBI notes from the interview with Ronnie, Chris's father. And now we are on to 332 with uh, Jones from the FBI, who's doing an interview of John uh, from Anna Darko. So uh, the report is 821. 2018. John was interviewed at his place of employment, Anadarko Petroleum Corporation, 501 North Division Boulevard, Platteville, Colorado. Agent Greg Zentner, Colorado Bureau of Investigation, was also present during the course of the interview. After being advised of the identities of the interviewing agents and the nature of the interview, John provided the following information. John is the supervisor of Anadarko's operations center. He is familiar with Christopher Watts, but John recommended interviewing agents speak with Watts' supervisor, Luke, and other co-workers for additional information regarding Watts. Anadarko maintains approximately 1,200 to 1,500 batteries, in quotes, or oil production sites, in a geographical area generally constrained by Greeley to the north, Interstate 470 to the south, Interstate 76 to the east, and Interstate 25 to the west. These sites vary between exploration and production, E and P, and midstream. Midstream sites are manned 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. E and P sites are further divided into vertical and horizontal sites. Vertical sites are the older type of the two, and Watts worked as a field supervisor at work vertical sites. Anadarko has approximately 400 cameras in service, of which approximately 200 are located in the parking lot and vicinity immediately around Anadarko's Platteville office. The remaining cameras are in place at major batteries. Anadarko has had issues with individuals entering oil production sites and committing lewd and or destructive acts, so Anadarko placed a small number of game cameras at some sites, perhaps 5 to 10. These cameras are not serviced. Batteries are not typically access controlled beyond a simple secured gates. These locking mechanisms do not keep a, lo a log of access times or persons accessing the sites. Some newer facilities may monitor access in and out and have cameras, but most sites do not maintain records of entry or exit of personnel. Vertical sites are generally managed by exception, in quotes. Operators maintaining vertical sites are given a certain number of wells to maintain, and these sites are typically seen approximately every few days to once a week in order to ensure proper function. Operators work different types of shifts. Some may work seven days on and seven days off, or eight days on and six days off. A typical workday may be ten hours or more. Anadarko work trucks are equipped with GPS monitoring. John was not sure of the frequency in which the GPS updates in relation to a vehicle's location, but he believed it may, be, it may update every 1 to 10 minutes. Anadarko uses a service called Geotab. This service tracks information to include, but not limited to, seatbelt use, hard acceleration and deceleration, and speed. Work truck use is limited to work-related tasks. Operators also utilize a messaging application called GroupMe to send and receive messages to other crews and the operations center regarding tasks, locations, and other, any other work-related information. GroupMe is typically accessed by employees' work telephones. Luke is currently Watt's supervisor. So a lot of good information there. Uh, some things that jump out at me are um, how big Anadarko is, right? 1,200 to 1,500 batteries or oil production sites. That's a lot. This is only one. Survey 319 is only one of 1,200 to 1,500. And then you have, uh, you know, everything with the vertical sites. How these vertical sites were older, and those are the ones that Chris worked on. And those are the ones least likely to have any cameras. Uh, they weren't, um, access in and out was not recorded. Even, uh, and from a log perspective, certainly there was GPS on the truck, so there was proof of him being there. But you could see why he chose uh, this type of place. He had access to it easily. It wasn't recorded, and it was um, a place that was only checked, you know, every few days to a week. So uh, they were not uh, t 
sites that were prioritized at the top in terms of security and monitoring. So that is obviously why he uh, chose a site like this. These are the handwritten notes of Jones on August 15th, 10.20 a.m. with Greg Zentner, uh, the other FBI agent. So these are just various uh, bullet points that he notes, uh, again, handwritten. John, OIC supervisor, Chris Watts, uh, works 200 cameras in lots of approximately 400 and major battery uh, well site. Two cameras, not sure what those two cameras are. Uh, 1,200 to 1,500, that's the number of batteries. Not access controlled, unless near neighborhood. Gate codes, doesn't record access. Game cameras, 5 to 10. EMP, exploration and production. Watts, EMP, vertical, older facilities. Midstream, manned 24-7. Routes, operator given certain number of wells, get schedule. Vertical sites, managed by exception, sites seen weekly to every few days. Operators make sure site orderly. Automation, uh, maintenance may show up. Uh, operators, 7 on, 7 off. Watts, 8 on, 6 off, Wednesday through Wednesday. 10 to 12 hour hitch around 5 a.m. to 5 a.m. Not sure what that means. Uh, 470 loop, I-76, Greeley, I-25. That's what it's uh, surrounded by. GPS, minute to f slash five minute slash ten minute interview intervals. Geo tab in parentheses has contacts. Track seatbelt, hard stops, hard acceleration, track speeds. And then another bullet doesn't track. And then nothing. Uh, nothing else there. Uh, a star is written here. Group me in parentheses in quotes. I am slash Skype based. Uh, receives messages for work tasks. Work cell slash personal cell. Uh, group me on work cell. Luke, recent boss. Truck for limited personal use. Weekly printout. Geotab. Mixed teams. Days off someone. I guess someone has a day off. Next page of his handwritten notes. Green book. Uh, sorry, the rest of this is a bit hard to read. Actually, some... A number of uh, these handwritten notes here on the next following pages are a little difficult. Uh, letter to Chris. Lavelle Thrive. Pay every Tuesday. Paul, CEO of Lavelle. The name Philip written on the left side. Uh, I think that's the officer. Uh, Troy. Uh, then an arrow to Luke. Uh, Chris Watts' name. John T.'s name. Production battery, two, uh, 1,200, 1,500 sites, we know. Gate, gate code, IOC, inter integrated, uh, operation center. Chris, EMP, with an arrow to the word vert, that's vertical. Um, and it's more about midstream and more about the shifts that they have. Fred is an, uh, uh, sorry, field operator. Uh, very, very little security. Yep. Geotab group me on the next page. More of that same information. Uh, we have Troy's name. Work cell. Well, that's his phone number, which is redacted. Uh, Chris Watts, E40s. Um, I guess, oh, that's Juanita. I guess that's, um... John's wife, maybe that's Juanita, and then it has an arrow to Shanann. AZ and North Carolina, I guess that's Arizona, North Carolina. August 12th, Survey Ranch 319. And it looks like UPRC with an arrow drawn t t towards the 319. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it says 8.15 a.m. I guess that's um, when he got there, and then it says Rogers. Then it says 10.29 at 11 a.m. And then it says friend um, at at house. Oh, friend at house and Nicole. So I guess that's when he was starting to get the, the first calls from Nicole. Uh, we have Brown F250 written here. Um, that's the truck. Ch um, Chris's truck. 
Chad's name, Melissa's name, Cody's name. And we have Luke again, April 16th, super, the date of 5-2. 85 to survey. It might be um, directions. Let's see, uh, some more notes here. Kids, field contract or, or field coordinator. Wife issues, 1029. Different geotab week ago. 6.30 to 7 or 6.30 or 7 a.m. 8.12. Something off as might be a work day off or something. Um, an, an illegible word here. She, she something be there, can't get a hold of my wife. Oh, she should be there, something like that. Can't get a hold of my wife. Talked about camera. Could tell Chris was upset. This is on the following page, 337. Chad's name, then it's listed one year, work only, talks about girls, a new baby, survey 319, 6.15 a.m., text already there, 8 a.m., arrives at three night, survey 319, security, something, on phone, lots, 12 a.m., left to... A check on wife of oh, that he was on of oh, the security alarm was the last one and he was on the phone a lot something not right with the house some uh, something called Chris really worried that might have been Nicole or or someone and then a, another line here it says go to guy we have Melissa's name again and then Page 338, we get into another FBI interview. This is by uh, FBI Agent Smith. Date of entry, August 21st. Writer Special Agent Tori Smith with the Federal Bureau of Investigation is Computer Analysis Response Team, CART, tech certified, and is digital extraction technician trained. On August 15, 2018, FBI Sur Supervisory Special Agent Todd Sanston uh, requested writer respond to 2825 Saratoga in Colorado to assist investigators with an internet service provider router. Writer was advised the router was a Netgear 900 N900. While responding to the residents, FBI computer scientist Wes Scott Hyde downloaded a manual for the Netgear 900 N900 from Netgear's website and emailed it to writer. Writer responded to the residents on August 15th and met S.A. Matthew Saylor with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. S.A. Saylor directed Ryder to the location of the Netgear N900. S.A. Saylor advised the homeowner, Chris Watts, provided consent to search the Netgear N900. Ryder took photographs of the N Netgear N900's location and identifying labels on the Netgear N900. Images will be maintained digitally in the 1A section of the case file. Ryder logged into the Netgear N900 utilizing the default username password credentials identified in the manual. Writer took a screenshot of Writer's network configuration. It will be maintained digitally in the 1A section of the case file. Writer navigated to various tabs of the administrative portal and took screenshots. Writer navigated to Advanced, Security, Schedule, and determined the Netgear N900 had a time zone set for GMT 8, uh, eight hours. Pacific Time, U.S. and Canada, Tijuana. At the time of the exam, the Netgear N900 was located in Mountain Daylight Time, GMT 600 hours. Writer identified all log times would be offset by two hours. Writer navigated to Advanced, Administration, Logs, and copy-pasted the logs into a text file Writer named Router Log 01. We saw that before. Go to the next page is mostly blank there. We go to another FBI interview with Jones uh, of Troy. This is a uh, date of entry, August 21st, on page 340. Troy uh, 
was interviewed at his place of employment, Anadarko Petroleum Corporation, 501 North Division Boulevard. Agent Greg Zentner uh, was also present during the course of the interview. After being advised of the identities of the interviewing agents and the nature of the interview, McTroy provided the following information. Troy is an Anadarko field supervisor, and he has known Chris, Christopher Watts for approximately two and a half years. Watts and Troy have sometimes worked opposite schedules, but they have been on the same schedule maintaining E-40 oil sites or batteries since approximately October 2017. Troy and Watts generally only interact at work, but Troy met Watts' wife, Shanann, at the 2017 company Christmas party. Troy was aware that Shanann sold Thrive products, and Troy's wife had also become involved with the product. Troy believed he had been to Watts' home twice, the most recent occasion around February 2018. Troy's children had played with Watts' daughters, Celeste and Bella. Troy remarked that one of his children had seen photographs of Celeste and Bella on news channels following their disappearance and had asked if Celeste and Bella could come play. I'm sorry, that just hits me in the gut. You know, Troy and his wife have to sit down with those kids and tell them that they're not going to be able to see Celeste and Bella anymore. How do you do that? You know, these are the things that Chris caused, this collateral damage. It's just awful. Troy recalled that during his interaction with Shanann, she was often on the telephone speaking with clients. Troy was aware that Shanann had recently spent approximately six weeks in North Carolina and Watts had flown out to visit in early August. Troy was also aware that Shanann had recently traveled to Arizona for a work trip and had just returned. Watts had told Troy about marital problems with Shanann, but he did not elaborate in depth. Watts and Shanann loved their children, and Troy believed they were trying to talk things out, in quotes. Watts was described as humble and quiet, and Troy never had the impression that Watts was seeing anyone else. Troy last saw Watts Monday, August 13, 2018. Troy and Watts were working on equipment at an oil well called Serby 319 near Rogan, Colorado. Troy believes he made it to Serby 319 at approximately 8.30 a.m., Chad and Melissa were also assisting. Melissa is relatively new, and she was shadowing Cody at the time. Cody had reported an issue with the well the previous Friday, August 10, 2018, so their task at Survey 319 was to correct the problem. The group left Survey 319 at approximately 11 a.m. and traveled to UPRC 1029. At some point after arriving at the second site, Watts began receiving notifications that a friend, Nicole, was ringing his home doorbell trying to contact Shanann. Watts spoke with Nicole on the telephone a few times. He had walked away from a gas motor when he took these calls, but he was in Troy's vicinity. Watts left UPRC 1029 soon after taking these calls. Watts was driving his Anadarko work truck, which is a brown Ford F-250 or similar. Watts' truck has two toolboxes, two tanks, and other items in the bed. Troy explained that the, be the beds of their work trucks are generally fully laden, which makes tasks such as hauling an additional air compressor in the bed difficult. The truck is an extended cab, but not a full four-door crew cab. Troy knows Watts to keep his truck very clean, and he does not believe Watts generally keeps much in the rear seat besides jackets or clothing. Troy remarked that Watts' home was also very clean when he visited early in the year. Troy text messaged Watts later in the day to ask how he was. Troy provided verbal consent for interviewing agents to access Troy's cellular telephone and photograph and video text messages sent between Troy and Watts. Writer began photographing messages prior to transitioning to video recording due to the amount of content. The messages for both personal and work telephones are maintained on disks and stored in 1A envelopes associated with this document. It should be noted that text messages to Watts' work telephone were recovered August 17, 2018 during a follow-up interview with Troy with interviewing agents. See Colorado Bureau of Investigation reporting for additional information about this follow-up interview. Troy believes it generally takes about an hour or an hour and 15 minutes to drive to Survey 319 from the Anadarko office.
There are approximately 500 E40 batteries in the area maintained by Troy's group. Six or seven of these sites are on or near Servi Ranch, which is a cattle ranch. Most of these are older sites that will be eventually be plugged and abandoned, maybe unplugged and abandoned. The sites are generally not very large, and they, and they may contain a couple tanks, a water pit, and a well. Troy, Watts, and their crews are responsible for keeping these wells operating until the wells are shut down. So it's interesting to note that they were eventually going to be shut down. I wonder when Survey 319 was scheduled to sh be shut down. Survey 319 specifically has tanks, a plunger lift, and a single separator. The tanks have openings that are approximately 12 inches by 12 inches and a man way cover on the back held by 27 or more bolts. Clean out crew sometimes come and access tanks via this hatch. Troy was familiar with another associate of Watts, a male, named Name Unknown. Watts had introduced this male to running 10-kilometer runs. The unidentified male's wife is also involved in Thrive, which is how Troy and Watts met him. Watts has lost weight over the past year or so, which he attributed to working out and meal preparation. Watts explained that he was trying to become healthy. Troy was not aware of any additional associates, friends, or family for either Sh Watts or Shanann. He was not aware of any jealousy issues, enemies, or any other malicious intent toward either Watts or Shanann. Troy provided a map of the Survey Ranch and surrounding sites. Writer photographed this map, and these photographs are electronically maintained with this document. So then we go on to discovery page 344, which is the handwritten notes by Jones. So August 15th, Troy, co-worker, Chris Watts, two and a half years, same group, sometimes opposite schedules. E40s on same schedule, same schedule since October 2017. Shanann sells Thrive, not Christmas, uh, met Christmas party 2017. Troy's wife taking... Shanann's pills. Maybe they thought they were pills uh, versus the patches. Uh, been to house twice. Last time about, doesn't say, but the, we know it was uh, February, I believe, 2018. We read above. Shanann on phone all the time, talking. Uh, Watts told Troy about issues. Shanann went to North Carolina six weeks. Watts went out August. Uh, Shanann went to Arizona for, and then it's blank. Uh, Shanann and uh, Chris loved girls, trying to talk things out. Uh, Chris humble and quiet. Chris never since, uh, never since seeing someone. Uh, last saw Monday. Sur uh, Survey Ranch, Rogan. Well, 319. Uh, Chad, Melissa, Cody, Melissa was shadowing Cody, uh, Troy out about 8.30, or I guess he arrived around 8.30, left 3.19 to go to 10.29, 11 a.m. Friend was ringing doorbell trying to get hold of Chris, uh, talked to Nicole a few times in the area during calls, walked away from gas motor. Usually takes hour to hour and 25 to get there. 500 sites in area, 130 to 140. Most will be plugged and abandoned. Oh, it is uh, it is plugged. Sorry, I was wrong. Sites, not big. Two tanks, water pit, one well. Next page. Help keep wells running. 319 plunger, little lift. Single separator, 12 by 12 area into tank. Manway cover on back hold by 27 bolts. Clean cut crew has, uh, clean out crew has to come. Left site shortly after 11. Uh, Troy message, Chris message back. Video messages, verbal consent, 1055, 500 sites, E40s, 6 to 7 sites in Survey Ranch, Cattle Ranch, Drove Work Truck, F250 Brown, around 2015 um, is, I guess, the make or year it was made. Two toolboxes, uh, tank, Methanol tank with extended cab but not full crew cab. Keeps truck clean. Troy wanted to and then it's blank. Thrive man. Chris got 
man into jogging. Wife would thrive. Chris met them. Lost weight, tried burn and thrive. Weight set, makes meals, charges within loss, changes within last year or within loss year. Trying to get healthy, no other associates, friends, hangouts, not aware of enemies, no jealousy. Continued, it has Melissa's name, Cody. Melissa, it says 7.30 to 8 arrives. Uh, Cody, 319 near Tanks. So, you could tell, again, Chris did not have a lot of time there. Melissa and Cody arrived at set, or between 7.30 and 8. Group me, question mark. Regular, not typical. Usually at office, question mark. Pretty much always. Boots, question mark, check. Typical, something, check. How big hole, hole, question mark, check. Looking around, question mark, check. Expecting, question mark, check. And why there, question mark, check. And then all bracketed by Troy's name, August 17. So that is where we will end part 17 with those uh, interviews. And we will finish there on discovery page 346 and start up on 347 next. So uh, some in, you know interesting things that are pointed out when you actually read the summaries of the interviews. Uh, I do encourage you to listen to the interviews if you haven't already. They're all over YouTube. Um, because they are very interesting to hear firsthand. But, you know, we learned a lot, I think, in these, just understanding more about Chris's choice in using his work site. It's obviously very strange for someone to use their own place of work, I imagine, um, to, you know, dispose of of bodies. But you can tell that Chris really had this picked out for a reason, and it was because he had control. He had control over the sites. They were old. Nobody cared about them as much. They were just waiting to be plugged and taken out of service. And if you do have any information on, you know, when 319 was scheduled to be taken out of service, I'd really like to know that because I, I'm curious as to how long... Um, he had from when he was going to put the remains there to when that was going to be plugged in and out of service. I don't know that whole process, so maybe there was still risk there, but it certainly adds to the reasoning as to why he, he chose these sites. Um, thank you so much for listening, and we will resume again on part 18. In loving memory of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico, and God bless the entire Rusek family. This is The Diplomat, and I hope you have a great day.